Jedi Starfighter. And I'll throw in a toaster. And have a preview for a game from martial arts legend Bruce Lee. <laughs> Stick around. Welcome to Extended Play from Metreon in San Francisco. I'm Adam Sessler. And I'm Kate Patello. Now, while we usually like to take our video game-based movies with a grain of salt, the newly released Resident Evil movie caught our attention. The film was directed by Paul Anderson, who also directed the first Mortal Kombat movie, one of the finest of many a poor video game to movie translation. And we got a chance to go behind the scenes and see what happens when you mix supermodels and rotting flesh. <laughs> The latest video game inspired movie is here, Resident Evil. The film doesn't use much plot from the popular Capcom game series. What are these things? But instead creates a new saga that takes place in an underground laboratory called The Hive. A deadly viral outbreak has occurred. In response, a supercomputer that controls and monitors The Hive seals the entire facility to contain the leak killing all the employees. The computer manifests itself as, get this, a spooky little British girl. You're all going to die down here. Now what would Resident Evil be without the walking undead? Those ex-employees are now, you guessed it, zombies. The neat thing. We're trying to make a movie that's a great Resident Evil movie for the fans. And, and I count myself as one of those. I'm a big fan of the game. But also, we're trying to make a really great horror movie. <gasps> really, it felt like the game. I love how it's just empty. And then you'll turn a corridor and suddenly be attacked by all these zombies. And it's something about that really, I just found exciting. Action! Keep moving! That message will go off! The thing about Resident Evil that makes it suitable for a feature film is that it is unpredictable. You do not know what is around the corner. The creature is based upon the liquor in the game, the liquor that is part frog and part human. In the game, he's pretty scary, but we felt he wouldn't stand up to being on a big screen. So we actually come up with this idea of an uber liquor. For the liquor sequence, the filmmakers built numerous puppets to create the monster, first seen in the Resident Evil 2 game. It's pretty much me against 12 really angry, really hungry, really gross animals. You won't feel bad for the zombie dogs. To create the zombie dogs, real Doberman pinchers were used and covered with prosthetics. A nice dog. We started out with the actors doing uh, commando training, which is in a military form of training, uh, how to take over a building. Report. Uh, we also taught them climbing, because throughout the movie, they have to climb excess tunnels. Captain! No! Ah! <laughs> What's important is you get this. Okay. And then crack. We did also martial arts with the actors, variation from Taekwondo and American Karate, uh, with actors like Mila. She had extensive martial arts. Hitting him. While some gamers are upset that the film does not exactly follow the plot of the games, Resident Evil has definitely been taken into a whole new medium. Coming up on Extended Play, there's Klingons on the starboard bow and our review of Star Trek Bridge Commander. And we raise the Jolly Roger in Pirates Legend of Black Cat. This April, get ready for Tech TV's biggest month ever. Tech TV's 2002 Technology Festival. Special reports, new shows, and Tech TV's great gadget giveaway. New prizes and new chances to win every day, all month long. A month filled with amazing innovations from transportation, safety, and communication to medical breakthroughs in the world of sports. All month, your favorite Tech TV program show you how to live longer, play better, and get the most out of technology. It's Tech TV's 2002 Technology Festival, coming April 1st. 
Hold on to your seats. We're going faster. Exploring farther. Growing stronger. Changing the world one breakthrough at a time. Get a front row seat into the future. Tomorrow's World. Weeknights at 6.30, 5.30 Central, only on Tech TV. Extended Play is presented by Xbox. The future of video games has arrived. Check it out at Xbox.com. DJ Professor K here, the last free voice in the city, baby. Here's a long distance dedication from the kids on the street. Dear Security Goon Squad, we want to thank you for being you. Slow, weak, clueless. We are free, man. Keeping the soul of the city alive. You can't stop us. Yeah. Hugs and kisses, baby. Just that radio future. Tune into the new revolution. Ready to team. New and only on Xbox. You must all break out of your humdrum existences. The atom becomes the flower, becomes the ox, becomes the man. We all must change. The world needs change. You, sir, you must change. Chevy Avalanche. The only vehicle that changes from an SUV to a pickup. There's also a Motor Trends 2002 Truck of the Year. Thank you. No, thank you. Chevy Avalanche, like a rock. Today's business thought. Searching for more secure remote access? You'll find that the path leads to one place. WorldCom provides seamless VPNs for all your access types from more locations worldwide than any other IP network. There's a big difference between remote access and secure remote access. What is it? WorldCom. extended play. Now, there have been several Star Trek games out there of varying quality, but none has yet to address every fan's number one wish. You know, the one sitting on the bridge in a big chair in front of a big monitor telling people what to do. Well, now Activision has taken the helm and brought us Bridge Commander. You want that review? Make it so. Star Trek Bridge Commander takes you where no game has gone before right in the captain's chair of a Federation starship. It's been tried before, but never with this level of success. Captain, I'm glad to see you're settling into the center chair. You are a freshly promoted rookie captain, undertaking your first missions at the helm. Surrounding you are the science officer. Yes, Captain. Engineer. Your orders, Captain. Navigation and communications. Yes, sir. Tactical. Yes, Captain. And First Officer. Yes, sir. Who awaits your command. Cancel red alert. People, this is a Trekker's dream. True, the character's strangely triangular faces are kind of creepy. You might also complain that you can only save between missions and that the storyline is almost anal retentively linear. Respect and discipline should always be maintained on the bridge of a starship. But when it's time for battle... Red alert, shields up. Plot and intercept course. Aye, sir. Divert power to weapons and engines. Scan for enemies. Initiating scan. Take out the enemy's weapon systems. Engaging to destroy, Captain. And then their warp drive. The only thing really lacking here is a tachyon pulse. For an authentic Star Trek experience with only minor flaws, set phasers on fun. We give Star Trek Bridge Commander a four out of five. If you're uncomfortable about stepping into Jean-Luc's shoes, rest assured, the training mission in the game is voiced by none other than the captain himself, Patrick Stewart. Now moving from spaceships to those old-fashioned wooden ships that actually go on water, Pirates, a legend of Black Cat, has been in development for quite some time. Well, it's finally here, but is it all that in a barrel full of rum? Here's the review. My mother was a pirate? Yep. Like mother, like daughter. Pirates, the legend of Black Cat, tells the story of Katarina, a female pirate looking to avenge her father's death 
and unravel the secrets of her past. That's lock it! It's mine. You can't have it. The actual game is split between the land and sea, with two distinct gameplay modes. The game's third-person quest has the feel of a classic adventure title, as you explore each island, combat enemies, and seek out various items. The gameplay works well here. When playing as a landlubber, you'll run, jump, and fight a crazy mix of villains. In between island hopping, the ship-based mode lets you control the in-game camera while you maneuver around and engage in ship-to-ship -ship combat. The mechanics of battle allow you to fire cannons or ram other ships. You can also soup up your ship and make it a mean floating machine. The wind dancer. Aside from the single player game, there's also a multiplayer mode that lets you go ship to ship in a variety of battle environments. And these water-based dogfights are compelling, especially when you're trying to sink one of your friends. For adventure or quest gamers, it will be hard to overlook Pirates The Legend of Black Cat. While it isn't a masterpiece, the game does feature a nice mix of entertaining quests in its land-based combat and some fun sea battles in the ship-based mode, which is why we give it a 3 out of 5. Coming up on Extended Play, we go Sonic on the GameCube. Two more left. And get behind the scenes for the new Star Wars Episode 2 game. If you like, I can do it with a little more je ne sais quoi. On the PC title, Jedi Knight. Now, this game, too, was intended for the PC, but then moved over to the Xbox. But knowing all that, it still doesn't answer the most important question. Is it any good? It is a shame that your father did not share the vision I have for the new China. All this over dinnerware? Actually, no. New Legends takes place in a retro future China where you, Sun Tzu, must stop the demonic Zhao Gan and his minions from taking over the country. And you meet buddies like the mysterious female warrior and the blue half-demon. They call me Boo. Whatever. And I'm not all demon. Whatever. Combat is the heart of the game, and each hand can carry a weapon. Different combinations of different weapons results in various combos, and it's fun to seek out and discover them. Nothing else in the game works that well. The camera cannot keep up with the action and finds itself all over the place. Add that to the inability to lock on to a single target, and you've got grief. AI is similarly poor, as enemies just mob you, and your allies seem incapable of giving you a hand. Where the game really suffers is in visuals. New Legends is one of the poorest looking Xbox games, with bland textures and level design that's needlessly big and thoroughly vacant. Your warriors seem like action figures in the land of big doors. There was a lot of hope for New Legends, but the clever combat system is overwhelmed by shoddy camera, poor level design, and uninspired graphics. We give it a 2 out of 5. I am Mai Khan. I am Sun Tzu. And I'm bored. Now, unfortunately, New Legends developer Infinite Machine is no longer, but keep your eye out for Justin Chin because he's sure to pop up somewhere else. Now, they said it would never happen, but Sonic the Hedgehog is, in fact, making an appearance on a Nintendo system. In fact, two different games on two different systems. So, here's a look at one each for the GameCube and the Game Boy Advance. Hey, that... That blue hedgehog again, of all places. Sonic fans rejoice. A double helping of hedgehog is on the menu for Nintendo systems. The GameCube version of Sonic Adventure 2 Battle is essentially a straight port of the Dreamcast title. Gameplay is divided between speed stages, shooting sprees and mechs, and chaos emerald hunting, depending on which character you're playing. Two more left. The graphics still look good, even by GameCube standards. The music is still loud and somewhat obnoxious. And yes, the camera is still bent on killing you. A few new features are included to spice things up. The two-player battle mode is expanded with more areas to play in and a smoother frame rate. The Chow Raising minigame now includes a stat screen and a new Chow Karate tournament. Sonic Adventure 2 Battle remains a strong title worth picking up if you don't have the Dreamcast version. We give it a 4 out of 5. Sonic Advance marks the return of classic 2D Sonic gameplay. Choose between Sonic or three of his friends to progress through seven acts packed with stellar animation. 
The challenge is a bit on the light side, but the characters play differently enough to make the game worth a few replays. As an extra bonus, link up the Game Boy Advance to the GameCube like so, and you can download your Chow into the Sonic Advance Tiny Garden for Chow husbandry on the go. Sonic Advance earns itself a 4 out of 5 thanks to its solid old school feel. With this one-two punch of Sonic action, Nintendo fans can finally see what the fuss over that blue hedgehog is all about. There's only one real Sonic. It's been strongly hinted at that Sonic's going to make an appearance in the next Mario Kart for the GameCube. Now that's just a rumor, but when we find something definite, we're going to let you know. Now how long have we been playing fighting games that we played nothing that involves the master himself, Bruce Lee? Well that's true until now. This next game for the Xbox involves motion capturing from one of Lee's last students. So let's check out Bruce Lee, Quest of the Dragon. Be water, my friend. Finally, a Bruce Lee game. You know, the rebellious guy who introduced Kung Fu to America. You get to knock people out all over the world in such places as Hong Kong and San Francisco. It all takes place in the 70s. The characters in the cutscenes have a stylish attitude. Shut the shades and let's get freaky, my foxy Nubian queen. It's rumored that you'll be able to execute over a hundred motion captured moves. Here's an attack that's useful when you're surrounded. The camera movements during gameplay look very cinematic. And how can you not love the sound effects? At first glance, it looks like it could be a killer arcade game, but will it have the depth to keep our attention? Is that all you've got? Bruce Lee, Quest for the Dragon, will be out for the Xbox in April 2002. I heard you had returned. Welcome back, Lee. Thank you, teacher. I'm detecting a severe disturbance in the Force. Coming up on Extended Play, we use the Force to guide us in Jedi Starfighter and give you tips on beating the man. Jet Set Radio Future. Something very unique. It takes place during episode two, so you can see elements before the movie comes out. The attack of the clones may still be two months away, but the first major episode two tie-in is already on store shelves in the form of Star Wars Jedi Starfighter. A Star Wars Jedi Starfighter uh, takes place 10 years after the first Starfighter. Um, during the episode two time frame, and it basically follows a character named Adigalia, and she teams up with Reddy and Nim, who are two characters from the first Starfighter. I'm detecting a severe disturbance in the Force. Great. We work very, very closely with Lucasfilm licensing to make sure that nothing we do conflicts with what George is doing in the film, and because the film is, you know, a work in progress until it releases, um, there's constant changes, so we have to be, you know, kept up to date on that and let them know what we're doing so that there's no conflict. And that can get tricky sometimes. What does Jedi Starfighter offer that the previous Starfighter didn't? We have multiplayer throughout the entire game. So two players can sit down and actually play through the whole story portion of the game together. We introduced force powers. We're basically adding a magic system to a cockpit. And Nim is not a Jedi. He's more of the ballistic bomber, and he shoots kind of the regular standard type weapon. Transport this. I think we did a tremendous job with the water. Um, that was a, a hellish part of the project. I would say that the water is just a fantastic aspect of the game. You'll see waves actually coming up to the sand and dissolving into the sand. I think we've got over eight minutes of full motion video on our, in our game. We did everything in NURBS. NURBS? Non-uniform rational B splines is what it stands for. It's a smoother surface than a polygon. Nerves are, are very good for soft surfaces like a human body. That's the Gallia. Was the prototype all we expected? We have quite a bit of bonus material. As far as the movies are concerned, we did this whole outtake section to all the movies. The way they originated was from one animation that you'll see where the Nemodians are dying. If you like, I can do it with a little more je ne sais quoi. Everybody was so excited, they'd do extra time, like, on the weekend. How about we all have an off-site and do some old-fashioned go-kart racing this afternoon? What do you say? What about a little episode two info in the game? There's mention of Anakin and Obi-Wan and Mace and Yoda. Some pretty significant spoilers, I think, that, you know, kind of reveal things that happened in the movie. But uh, that's what Lucasfilm wanted, and we were certainly happy to, to give them that. So, young Padawans, 
Perhaps it's time to trade in that Naboo fighter for something with a bit more force. Okay, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. No money down, cash back, and I'll throw in a toaster. That's the best I can do. All right, young Jedi, listen up, because we've got a Star Wars giveaway for you on our website. Go out there, you can sign up for a chance to win a prize pack, which includes a copy of the game, a t-shirt, and here's the best part, a bumper sticker which proudly proclaims you as an official member of the Jedi Council. Now, if you've been playing Jet Set Radio Future and you feel like the wimp on the playground and the cops are beating you silly, never fear. Here's a strategy guide to get you tagging and bragging in no time. Our favorite cell-shaded thrashing skaters have taken to the streets once again in the Xbox new Jet Set Radio Future. The game that lets gamers relive those cool cartoon-like graphics, over-the-top gameplay and killer soundtrack. Now, a problem with the game is that in some parts it's a pain in the neck, head, and pretty much the whole body. Which leads us to today's strat guide. Now, we could spend precious seconds explaining how to spray paint the buildings, avoid the Fuzz 5-0, and land tricks without hitting a bus. But that stuff is self-explanatory. No, my friends, today's strategy will instead focus on something that, according to gaming chat rooms, has been a constant spot of confusion, namely, what in God's name do these street challenges mean, and how do you complete them? If you can't complete the challenges, no graffiti souls for you. You've got a graffiti soul. I have one more. Check me out, John. Okay, let's start with the skyscraper district and the street level challenge. Go circle around Pharaoh not to fall. Okay, basically they're telling you to head over to Pharaoh Park and grind around the perimeter on this rail. If you're having trouble with the not to fall part, perhaps you should try not to guide your character when you're attempting to jump rails. The reason being that the autopilot is so jacked up that sometimes it over adjusts to where you're aiming. So most of the time it's best just to let the computer do it for you. Now, if you can't read Japanese, or even if you can, you still might be confused by our next street challenge located in the Shibuya Terminal, which I will not even attempt to pronounce. Now, for this challenge, you just need to locate the corresponding symbol. We'll give you a hint. It's right up here. To get there, just head up these stairs, then grind back down to get enough speed to make the jump. Now, make sure you hit the brakes or you'll fall back down. Darn it! Okay, one more time. Up the steps, then grind and hit the brakes. Great. Now, you need to turbo boost over to the next platform. Now, just hit up all the other green platforms and your mission will be accomplished. The street challenge at 99th is the same kind of situation. Locate the corresponding symbol on the gate and start your grinding. Now, some folks might get confused and grind up the dragon above the symbol, which will give you lots of points, but will not help you locate those graffiti souls. In order to do that, you need to head over to the rail on the ground next to the symbol. Okay, I think we have time for one more. Now for this, oops, sorry, time's up. Looks like you're on your own for the rest, but we hope we gave you a push in the right direction. Good luck. If you need another look at that strategy guide or anything else from today's show, it's all at extendedplay.com. And while you're there, make sure you sign up for our newsletter, The Expansion Pack. And don't forget about the Star Wars giveaway. Now next time, we've got what's hot from the big shots at the Game Developers Conference in San Jose. Don't miss it. Well, we'd like to give a great big thanks to Metreon for hosting us today. And until next time, game, game over. over. See what happens when you mix Mila Jelovich with the... <gasps> There's a naked guy on a bike behind me. That strikes me as being very uncomfortable. To see those strategies one more time. I've got to get one more time. Let me do it again one more time. Here's the best part. A bunker, bunker sticker. A bunker sticker for your bunker. See what happens when you mix Mila Jovovich 